I am the Global Medical Unit Head for Rheumatology here at Takeda. I've been with Takeda about close to 10 months now. So, and I come from a, a long line of industry working in immunology across the different indications. So to your question regarding PSA, um, as you are aware, we have a lot of treatments that are available in, in the, for the treatment of PSA. But one thing that we are clear is that about there are lots of patients that have PSA, and then you have a lot of the way the PSA manifests itself is that it's multi-factorial and is also heterogeneous in, in nature. That means that uh, a presentation that from a patient from one patient is very different from that from the second patient, and the needs of one patient in PSA with PSA is quite different from the other patient as well. So when you have some things like this and understanding that there are multiple domains of PSA, the treatment has to be tailored just like every other treatment to this patient. So you're finding that the met needs that we have currently are, are finding a drug that is is creating a balance, a benefit and risk profile balance that could be targeted to the same, to, to different patients. Let's take, for example, some drugs have a good efficacy, but the safety profile is not that great, or they have a good safety profile and then they have a good um, uh, efficacy uh, profile. And then you find that because of the different domains that we have in PSA, and I, I don't know if you're aware of this, some manifest in terms of having food psoriasis with your PSA, or just having enthesitis, dactylitis, or axial disease. And because of that, there are treatment regimens that are available now that are not able to meet those needs. So we are always looking for a new treatment that is actually going to bring uh, a, 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 a different approach, be it a different way of um, administration, be it intra, intra, in, intramuscular or oral drugs that are going to be able to have a better or more improved risk benefit profile to be able to target to the right patient. So that's that's a huge unmet need in terms of being able to find that benefit risk profile. Another huge thing that we also encounter a lot is that you don't have drugs that actually have a long durability. So some, some patients might actually do well on a drug today and 12 months down the line, they lose efficacy. So some drugs, about 50 to 60% of these patients don't maintain that efficacy over, efficacy over time, be it because they develop anti-drug antibodies or they have immunogenicity to these drugs. So because of that, there's always a need for a new therapy in the line in the, for the treatment of PSA. Oh, that's great. That's great. So when we when we look at Tegeda's monocle, and, and I don't know if you're familiar with that, it's a TIC2 inhibitor called zasocitinib. It's a next generation um, selectivity TIC2. And we talk when we talk about the next generation selectivity TIC2, we're talking about its ability for us to focus and target TIC2, inhibit, inhibit TIC2 exclusively. And, and, and if you remember, TIC2 is part of the JAK family, and there's JAK1, JAK2, JAK3, but Takeda's zasocitinib is able to target TIC2 without impacting the JAK1, JAK2, and JAK3. And what we find that you, you're anticipating that this is going to be next level selectivity in terms of making sure that we focus on that zasocitinib is targeting TIC2 and not overflowing to or having any other effects that you have in all the other JAK inhibitors that are available one, two, or three. So in doing that, you're able to have a, or potentially have a drug that um, has a next level safety profile or next level efficacy profile. And as you are aware, Zasocitinib is still in, in, in development. We have uh, actually just released in, in the last year our phase two studies in psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis. And you can see in psoriasis the efficacy and the safety profile that is actually replicated in the PSA study, which is psoriatic arthritis as well. And you're seeing the safety profile that is matching what we're seeing mechanistically as well. We still have to explore this in our phase three studies and the PSA, PSO studies, psoriasis studies are already in their phase three, and we're anticipating to start our phase two, our phase three studies in PSA as well. So like I mentioned, so Zazacetin is going to be an oral uh, drug. So it's going to actually expand that, that field of having patients that are looking for oral medications. And Zazacetin is meant to be, it's, it's, it's hoping to be one of the, if, if not the best in class of oral drugs that are available. We're looking at a very good, so far in our phase two studies, a very good safety benefit profile. And if, if that is replicated in phase three, we're able to add to the momentarium of rheumatologists that are out there and giving them more options to, for their patients. So that's that's what we're looking at to, to be able to develop a drug that is able to have a good benefit risk profile, balancing the efficacy and the safety. 
something that I mentioned earlier regarding the unmet needs that are currently facing patients. And then when you look at something like the data that we just presented at ULAR, there are some challenges also when, when you have um, drugs that are not able to um, do well in terms of different weights and different um, sexes. But the data that we just presented at ULAR in terms of our, 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 our sub-analysis looking at weight, um, sex, and prior um, biologics, you're seeing that zazacitinib is, is, is actually working across all of this, independent of these different factors. So that's, a, that's something that people are excited about as well. So, so TIC2 is, is a key player. It plays a key role in the development of psoriatic arthritis and psoriasis and other um, autoimmune immune mediated diseases as well. So in inhibiting TIC2, you're actually relieving the symptoms and signs of PSA for patients. So it, it's, it's, it's a very key player in the development of PSA. So that's, that's what we're hoping that's going to be replicated in the phase three studies of zasocytinib as well. Yes, I wanted to, uh, I know it's the first time, but to reintroduce Takeda, sometimes when you have a good molecule, uh, I always say that it's, it's, it's not just having the good molecule, it's also having it in the right hands. So when you have Takeda Pharmaceuticals, some people say, why Takeda? I heard, I got a lot of these questions. Why are we developing this drug? But we wanted to highlight that um, Takeda has been around for a while, and this is something that surprises a lot of people, that Takeda, a few, a few weeks ago, celebrated 243 years of its existence. Yes, that's that's a very long history. And when you look at our, our history in immunologic diseases, or you look at our history, we've, we've for decades been working and developing these processes in other immune diseases, immune-driven diseases. And I think that having uh, having uh, zasocytinib within that, and, 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 and Takeda is well-versed or well experience to be able to develop this product and to be able to target the right patients. And having patients in mind is actually some very core part of Takeda, Takeda's core value. So, so I think it's something that I want the audience to understand that not only do we have a good product that is a next generation TIC2, that is also going to meet the, the needs of the patients that are currently um, it, it, having PSA, it's also in good hands, in, in, in the hands of a, a very well, um, well experienced pharmaceutical organization that actually puts patients in, in, in the center of all the decisions that they make. So that's something I would like them to know as well. <laughs> 